what's good y'all it's boy ross back at again with another video so i'm finally just getting back home uh, from the wrestlemania watch party night one uh, we had at a uh, studio movie grill in houston shout out to everyone that showed up tonight um looking forward to seeing y'all again tomorrow for night two it was a dope experience um it's something about watching wrestlemania on the big screen with y'all watching on twitch and with everyone that was there in attendance definitely a great time and overall i definitely enjoyed myself and we got to talk about some of the noticeable things that happened on night one for wrestlemania this year I'm going to get into the nitty gritty. I know y'all want me to talk about what happened in that main event. And boy, oh boy, that main event delivered. In my opinion, outside of the Gunther and Sami uh, Zayn match, this was match of the night, bro. This was not match of the night. This was fun. And I, it, it definitely has me excited for what's going to potentially happen at night too. So let's get right into this. So they're doing their interests. Cody comes out first, you know. Seth comes out there with this just Met Gala type outfit. It The outfit was ridiculous. You know, as soon as I saw Seth come out there, I was like, oh, yeah, th these guys are losing. They're not, they're not beating The Rock and Roman. Like, they're not losing to a guy that coming to the ring like that. So their entrances were cool. But then The Rock's entrance came out. The Rock's entrance was the best entrance of the night. And it makes sense because he's on the board of directors and he's the rock. So he's they're going to put a lot of money into the visual effects that were showing up, the lightning and and the the sound effects and the Brahma Bull logo. Bruh, the camera work, the rock showing in the foreground, like or in the background as the flames are rising up. And then there's an overhead shot of him standing in the middle of the a flaming Brahma Bull outline with him holding his custom championship, which might I add, the Brahma Bull style custom championship he has, so beautiful, bro. Looks so damn cool. And it's like, oh yeah, they're winning. You don't give a guy this top tier entrance and have him lose. He had the best entrance of the night. That shit was fantastic. And when he came out there, the crowd was hyped to see him. Crowd was hyped to see him. And then, of course, you have Roman Reigns' entrance, something that we've seen time and time again. And throughout this match, The Rock would, he would get cheers and boos. But, but for the most part, Roman was getting boos, especially when he was lining up against Cody. Now, anytime Seth was getting, like, a lot of offense, he would get a lot of boos, too. But as the match went on, people were just at this point, like towards the end of the match, they were just excited to see some just action. Um, Cody's mom was out there by ringside. And I think Cody's father-in-law um, was out there as well. And I think he gave his belt to his father-in-law and his mom was sitting ringside. So you knew there was going to be some things that were going to be said and implemented, especially with what The Rock has been uh, teasing for so long you know talking about mama road so uh you already knew they were going to set some stuff up there but it was cool just to see cody rose mom out there and the rocks mom was out there as well so i don't know if she's going to play a part into this uh for night two so i, I took a little bit of notes because this was just the atmosphere of being in the movie theater trying to interact with the twitch stream shout out to everyone that was part of the twitch stream trying to interact with you know people that was there um so i wasn't able to take as many notes but just a few uh, some of the most notable, uh, noticeable stuff. Now, what I I thought was funny that they did in this match, there was a point where the match just broke out into chaos. Roman and Cody started fighting up the ramp, and then Seth and The Rock started fighting by uh, the announcer's table, and they're outside the ring. The ref's trying to get control of it, and The Rock, you can clearly hear him say on camera, if you stop, if you, if you, if you start, if you stop this match or you do a, or you start a count, like, you know how the ref counts you out if you're outside the ring, a 10 count, if you, you know, don't make the 10 count, you get disqualified. He said, if you count this match, if you start counting, I'm going to fire you. So he threatened him. So once The Rock said that, I was like, oh, the ref can't, the ref is a non-factor. So that's their way of getting the ref to not be a non-factor. Like it was pretty much anything goes. It was anything goes. There was really no rules in in the side of Roman and The Rock because he basically said, 
you make any count, I'm going to fire you. So then they start brawling out into the crowd area, you know, and and at one point, Roman gets back to the ringside after Seth and, and The Rock have their back and forth. And when they get back into the ring and Roman attacks Seth knee, and that's the story that they start trying to tell Seth having the bad knee. And at this point, Seth was, <clears throat> and I know my voice is shot. It is what it is. It's probably going to be worse for night two. But Seth pretty much was a one-legged man. There was nothing Seth could effectively do that would help Cody. It was literally Seth on one leg and Cody in a 2v1, damn near. Because Seth was, for the most part, taking a nap. He was incapacitated. They took out the knee and they start working in knee. They, you know, it was... It was one of those things where I was like, okay, so this is the story. And it's probably going to play into Seth and Drew's match um, tomorrow because his knee going to be banged up. He's not. He, he damn near going to be at 50% tomorrow because his knee is going to be banged up. And then at one point in the match, uh, The Rock hit Seth with a low blow. A blatant low blow. The ref saw it, but there's nothing he could do. He couldn't disqualify him. There was nothing he could do. There was absolutely nothing he can do. He was going to get disqualified. It was, and I mean, well, he should have been disqualified, but the Rock has already made it very clear. You do anything, I'm going to fire you. And the ref got to feed his kids, bro. He got a family to feed too. The ref has to finish his story. And I make that as a note. The ref really couldn't do anything in this match, which I like that dynamic. It's not the ref just being blind. It's he has a power play. He can do whatever he wants. Um, at one point, uh, Roman and Cody had their back and forth and Roman started to bleed legitimately. It wasn't like a blade job. He started to see his blood on his nose and he got pissed. I was like, okay, all right. So Roman's getting pissed. We're seeing a little bit of color here. Um, at, there was another point I think Cody had hit, um, a crossroads and the rock, it looked like Cody's about to get the win. And The Rock pulls out the ref to stop the pin. And then Cody started catching the beats from The Rock and Roman. And Cody, you know, fighting back like the ultimate baby face. And what's the next thing on my note? Um, this was a cool spot. This, this was a cool spot. And you can tell they were setting it up. So Roman's on the other side of the ring getting ready for the spear. You got Cody in the ring. And you got The Rock on the other side. And basically, Roman runs at Cody. He's about to spear him. I think Seth ends up helping Cody or Seth and Cody. They kind of move out the way. And The Rock ends up eating the spear. I was like, oh, my God. That was such a cool moment. I'm like, are they going to pull a swerve here? Are they going to give them potentially the win? This is what I actually thought they may win it. Potentially. Because the way they set this up, after that happened, Seth and Cody, they started going on a tear together, beating up uh, The Rock and Roman. And I want to say this is when Cody and Seth hit double pedigrees on The Rock and Roman at the same time and went for the double pin for the one, for the two, and the, oh, the so this near fall was so close. Picture perfect. They both kicked out at the same time. I thought it was over. Potentially, they got me there. I was like, are they going to put a swerve here? They they actually got me there. That was a very, that was like almost one of the highlights of the match, bro. That was a good, great exchange. Now, we starting getting to the nitty gritty. I want to say uh, Roman and them, they start clearing off the table. Well, no, Roman is incapacitated, I believe. Uh, the Rock starts clearing off the table. The announce table. And The Rock has Cody. But then Seth gets involved. And Cody hits The Rock bottom to The Rock through the table. They have been teasing this spot since the go-home show on Monday Night Raw. And Cody finally hit The Rock bottom. Oh, my God. On, on The Rock through the table. And then Seth ends up getting speared uh, by Roman through the barricade. Yes, we've seen this spot. So many times, but it was the, the sequence of Cody hitting the rock with the rock bottom through the table. Seth getting speared through the barricade. The sequence of that, the framing of that, that's what made that whole little situation good. And all throughout this, all throughout this, the rock kept bringing his attention to Cody's mom. 
kept bringing his attention to Cody's mom. And that was the theme of the rock would always say something or look at Cody's mom and Cody's mom. She was like, Hey, she, she was with the shits. I loved it. At one point, the rock did bring out one of his, his, his belts. And he was, he was about to, he was about to put some work on, you know, on Cody, but they were able to get the belt away from him. And then Cody was about to put in some work on the rock with, with the belt. But then they ended up getting the belt away from him as well. The rock stopped it. And like I said, I just like that. The heel like of him, the heel heel nature of The Rock, always going to look at Mama Rhodes. And Mama Rhodes being a G, I don't give a She's standing up. You ain't going to do shit. I love it. So that's why I can't wait for Mama Rhodes to slap The Rock next uh, tomorrow. I hope that happens. Um, but towards the end, at one point during the match, there was a sequence where The Rock was going to hit the people's elbow, but he wasn't successful. But this time, towards the end, um... Seth Rollins was pretty much incapacitated. Cody was pretty much by himself. This time, he did. He hit the rock bottom on Cody in the ring. And then he did the people's elbow again. But this time, he said, this is for you, Mama Rhodes, as he hits the people elbow on Cody Rhodes. And the thing is, Cody was laid out before all that happened. But The Rock wanted the pin. And I said that. The Rock is going to want the pin here. And that's exactly what happened. Roman tagged himself out and hit uh, Cody with the people's elbow. He looked at his mama and said, this is for you, Mama Rhodes, and got the one, two, three. And it was this was fun, bro. This was fun. I expected them to lose. They, they had a few moments where you thought maybe they would pull a swerve because you saw The Rock pretty much doing whatever, abusing his power here. The ref was essentially there just to be there. To count the pin, but he couldn't really enforce the actual rules. And one shot, and I said this, I don't have the script, but I said this. They're gonna have Cody sit in the ring the same way he did at WrestleMania 39 when he lost to Roman. To paint the picture, the story, he lost. Will this be the same thing that happens to him on night two? He's winning, y'all. This, this is coming full circle. He's winning. He, he sat the exact same way as Pyro going off and Roman and The Rock in the background. He sat the exact same way. That's the story they're telling. How will Cody overcome this? This is what this story is about. So tomorrow, it's Bloodline Rules. It is going to be a clusterfuck. I want you to, I, I, I hope you guys understand. Tomorrow's match is going to be not even really a match. It's just going to be shenanigans. Any Samoan, anybody with a Samoan tattoo that lives in the Philadelphia area in a 50-mile radius is going to be there. <laughs> it's going to be a clusterfuck. That's what we want. But I do expect for the Avengers to assemble for Cody. And oh my God, they're going to probably give us 40 minutes of nonsense and I fucking can't wait. This was fun. This was best match of the night. Go watch this. This was really, really fun, bro. The Rock did his thing. The Rock did his thing. I'm glad he came back in a tag team match. I would have loved for it to have been Cody versus The Rock by himself, but we know The Rock wasn't going to lose. Coming back. This was fun. The Rock looked good out there. He was selling. He looked good out there. He didn't look gassed. Everybody did their part. This was fantastic. Definitely deserved to be main event of tonight. Love this match. Just had to get that out the way. Can't wait for night two. It's going to be a clusterfuck of greatness, and I'm here for it. It's going to be overbooked, and I'm here for it. Great, great match. We also got to talk about, if this match didn't happen, we also got to talk about Gunther versus Sammy. That was definitely, before this match, Gunther versus Sammy was matching tonight. Now, I didn't really take any notes for this, to be honest with you, other than the beginning segment where Sammy's in the back with his family, uh, his child, showing them love, they're supporting him. Then you have Chad Gable come out there. He's thinking Chad Gable's going to be with him. He's like, no, you got to do this by yourself. And then this long shot from the back all the way, he's hyping himself up through the curtains to get to Gorilla, the Gorilla position, and then he sees KO. You see KO there. KO hypes him up. He gives him a hug. Tell him, do your thing. He hyped, gets hyped up, 
And the cameras follow him all the way to the ring. I thought that was so tough. I love that entrance for Sammy. And this match was great. Gunther came out there as a dominant heel. And the thing is, Gunther did the same thing that The Rock was doing because Sammy wife was sitting out there. And Gunther kept going back, looking at her, and just disrespecting her. Y'all going to learn. You heels going to learn about messing with people, mamas, and family members, and wives in the crowd because it's going to be a downfall. Especially you, Roman. Especially you, Rock. But yeah, this, this match, no notes were needed. Outside of that main event, this was the best match. This was the best wrestling match. That main event was just a spectacle and it was fun. This was the best wrestling match of the show. This match was great. The storytelling was great. Gunther doesn't miss. Sammy don't really miss, especially when he's portrayed as the ultimate underdog. Now, I know some people are like, damn, it should have been Chad. I didn't want Gunther to lose. But I was saying this, the way they've been building this guy up storyline-wise, he's definitely winning. And even in this match, when Sammy was getting packed up, he had a lot. Of, he had some offense going in with Gunther. Like they they were trading back and forth. But when he started getting packed up, and Gunther kept going to the top rope to dive on him over and over and over, and Sammy started rising on the ground and powering up, and the crowd really started to get behind it because at the beginning of the match it was a "Let's go Sammy, Let's go Gunther" chant, and towards the end of the match. It was pro Sammy because of the underdog story they were telling and him fighting back. When Gunther goes to the other side of the ring and doesn't realize that Sammy's right there to hit him with the Haluva kick. Oh, so great. So fucking great, man. This was good. Hit him with back to back ones. This was this was fantastic. This is match for sure of the night outside. It would have been match of the night outside of the main event. But the best wrestling match. And I'm okay with Sammy winning. Because I think Gunther's done it all. He had a legendary title reign. Gunther has did it. I think it's okay if Gunther, we start putting him more into the world title picture. That's his next step. Gunther will be a world champion before this year is up. He may be a world champion at um, Bash in Berlin, potentially. I don't know. He will be a world champion. I'm just, so I, I think they made the right decision. Some people may not. But they made the right decision. I'm, I'm okay with Sammy winning. I, I have no problem with it. This was fun. And people in the in the crowd, we we got hyped. Because this, this was the, the ultimate underdog story. Sammy winning back-to-back -back WrestleManias. This was great. Definitely go check it out. Bianca, Naomi, and Jay versus Damage Control. This was an okay match. I think we were all just here to see what uh, Naomi, um, Jay could do. And when Jay got the hot tag... Everybody wanted Jade in there. Jade did her a couple of moves. Crowd was into it. They made her, they've definitely so far have built her up to be this mega star. And uh she got the win with that that uh, oh so uh, oh so interesting uh pin that she does. I don't know if that's gonna be a regular thing, but I don't think anybody's gonna trip. But Jade ended up getting the win there, and I don't know if they're gonna have them at one point take the titles, the tag titles. Off damage control. I could possibly see that happening. In the future. But it was an okay match. This was more so to get Jade out there. And the fans wanted to see it. It was an okay match. I also wanted to make mention. And I don't know if you guys noticed this. I know a lot of people were saying it in the chat. But did the crowd seem dead for a lot of this show? Now granted. There was a lot of stuff in here that. Wasn't as captivating. captivating. And one of the matches I'm about to talk about. Um, the Ray and Andrade versus Dominic in in Santos match. I, I really felt like that shouldn't have been on the show. My personally, I don't think it was worth a WrestleMania match. Like it was okay, but I just didn't feel like it was worth a WrestleMania match. It didn't feel like it was a WrestleMania match. Like that important the story's there but i just wasn't feeling it. i don't think the crowd was feeling it obviously dominic versus ray last year that was that was fantastic people were really sinking their teeth into this one this one was that one this one is like it was okay i just didn't think it should have been on wrestlemania me personally and then uh i was surprised that ray and andrade ended up winning but they ended up getting help from jason kelsey and uh wayne johnson uh they ended up helping them so you know, Eagle players said, fuck it. We're just going to get involved in the match. 
That's it. <laughs> like that, 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 that's it. It was cool to see Andrade on Wrestle, at WrestleMania. That was awesome. He had some, some nice maneuvers, but I, I, it was just like, okay, all right, cool. Thanks. <laughs> I, I wasn't that invested. Now, the match that really disappointed me the most, Jay versus Jimmy, bro. It wasn't bad, but it, it was really disappointing. Some some could say that was probably their least favorite match of the night because it the story is there, but they didn't expound enough on the story. Like the story's been there. They just hadn't been really putting too much focus on it. I thought Jimmy was going to win, but towards the end of the match, Jimmy starts doing the, hey, bro, I'm sorry, I love you. And then he tried to turn on Jay, and it, and it didn't work. And Jay ended up spearing him, going to the top rope, and hitting the splash for the one, two, three. It was, there was some cool yeet versus no yeet punches and stuff. And it was cool to see Jay's entrance and everybody, you know, doing that. That was cool. Lil Wayne coming out there. That was, that was cool for Jay's entrance. But that was it. The promo package for this match was chef's kiss. I, I said it was going to be great. But that was it. I was just like, uh, this match deserves to be on WrestleMania. But they didn't really do too much to really get people. Like, they didn't build it up as much as it should have been. This should have been, like, one of the premier bloodline stories. And they didn't really capitalize on that. Very interesting. So I was wrong in this prediction. Uh, I thought Jimmy was going to win. I was also wrong on the Ray, on, Ray and Andrade because I thought <laughs> Dominic and um, uh, Santos was going to win, but they didn't win there. So those two matches I definitely got wrong in predictions, but they were kind of the low point of the show, to be honest with you. The latter match, it was cool. <laughs> the concept kind of ruined it because I said, I feel like R-Truth and The Miz are going to win the Raw titles. Once I found out it was going to be, the titles were going to be separated but hanging on different brackets, I was like, oh, well, R-Truth and The Miz are going to win um, the the Raw titles and they, there's going to have to be a heel team to win the SmackDown. So it's going to be Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. They won that like halfway through the match. And it was a weird because they climbed up, they got him, and then that was it. And I was just like, I know the match don't stop, but it's just a weird concept to see. They grabbed him, and then they were just kind of like celebrating. They didn't, wouldn't even. They were about to try to go to get the other ones. They didn't even rush to get them. It was, it was weird. It was a ladder match in WrestleMania. Was it fun? Yes. Did people get packed up? Yes. It was crazy. And R-Truth is a fucking gem. I'm glad R-Truth got his WrestleMania moment. Him trying to tag in to The Miz, even though this is not a tag team match like that, was fantastic. R-Truth, um, The Miz got the hot tag for R-Truth. R-Truth comes, comes into the ring and starts hitting Finn Balor with the five moves of Dunes and hit him, hit him with the You Can't See Me from John Cena. And then hit, a, hit an AA, an attitude adjustment on Finn Balor. Hit him, uh, he hit an AA on Finn Balor onto a ladder. I, I thought that was funny, bro. R2's great. And when he won, people went crazy for it. It was It's R2. You, you can't hate the guy. So I'm glad he got his WrestleMania moment. That, that was weird. I mean, now the titles were separated. Cool. But Judgment Day, definitely, I figured they were going to lose. The question is, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen with Damian Priest in that briefcase? We're going to maybe find out tomorrow. And uh, throw up an X to JD, bro, because he got packed, as he always does. A lot of people got packed in this match. It's carnage. It's I've seen better ladder matches. I just felt like they could have. It was just weird to have one team win the SmackDown titles, grab the titles mid match. It was kind of it was a weird dynamic there. And <clears throat> I gotta talk about Rhea and Becky. They started off the show great. This was a, a great showing. Um, the right person won here. We knew Rhea was going to retain. It only made sense for Rhea to retain. There was a, there was a near fall where it looked like Becky may get, pull off the upset here. But it, it made sense that Rhea would retain, retain here. Um, it was an okay match. I, I, I do think her match with um, Charlotte last year was better. 
But this one was okay. It was a it was a solid opening match. I enjoyed it. The crowd, it really got the crowd kind of into it. The crowd was really rocking with this. And uh, <laughs> um, Becky definitely got booed. She was, she was, you would think she was the heel. She was getting booed when she was really getting some good offense in. This was pro Rhea Ripley and um, the right person went here. Overall, the show night one was okay. It was okay. The my favorite matches from the night, obviously, Gunther. Anything that Gunther touches is fucking gold. Gunther, Sammy, Chef's Kiss, and that tag team match, Cody, Seth versus Roman and The Rock, Chef's Kiss. Mainly for the story. That shit was fun. Those were the best matches of the night. Everything else was it was okay. But I felt like some of these matches didn't need to be on the show. In particular, I just didn't feel like the feud was built up enough. And obviously, the Jay versus Jimmy match, I think they 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 dropped the ball with that one. I think that one should have been cooked up a little bit more in the kitchen, uh, feud wise, because they it, it didn't hit. Like the match started and it was done. It, it wasn't. They didn't really do too much with that one. I was kind of disappointed. If I had to be honest, I'm gonna get this show probably a. A, hmm, I give it a seven. A seven. I would. It was fun. There was some good stuff on here, but I felt like a lot of it, it just didn't hit the mark. I, I have a feeling night two is going to be better than night one. I give this like a seven. At the lowest, a six and a half, seven. I most like because uh, I, I love that ending. I love the um, I love Jade's moment. That was cool. I love um, Gunther versus Sammy. That was great. And it was some good stuff. It wasn't bad, but I give it a 7 out of 10. So comment down below. Let me know what you guys rate night one. What was your favorite match? What was your least favorite match? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Road to 150K and I'm singing on the speed of YouTube. Wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See you on the next one. Peace.